waiting, huh? Hello everyone, it's Leon here. I'm joined by Meeks. Hello. Who is our resident um, Metal Gear Solid expert or madman? Madman. Madman. This is our review, obviously. I can be both. We can be both, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What have you given it then, out of ten? Eight out of ten. Now, this, even though I've seen it and I've been watching it being played, I think it looks fantastic. I'm still struggling with the time to price ratio. How are you justifying your eight out of ten? Yeah, so this is one of the more difficult games I've had to review in recent times just you know you do have to balance what's there against how good you know of the quality of the game hmm. the quality of the game is excellent you know the quality of the game for me is at least a 9 out of 10 it's I, I think it's a clear step above most stealth experiences we've had in PS3 so say put it next to something like a Splinter Cell hmm. Blacklist which I actually enjoyed a lot and is you know quite a sleek stealth game but this the 60 frames thing, you really can't, on PS4 at least, you really can't You're underestimate. obsessed with this at the moment. I know, I know, I know. It, it just makes it so smooth and so yeah. responsive, which is a big help when you're laying up headshots, etc. It, it et does, it looks fantastic. Like, I mean, it still weirdly looks like very small models, but it does look photorealistic, very small Yeah, I mean, models. the Fox engine, you know, and hopefully, we've not actually played the PS3 version yet, but I know one of the big things Kojima Productions went on about was the scalability, but certainly in PS4, it looks great. It's 1080, it looks pristine, mm -hmm. all very nicely textured, character models look excellent, you can really see the benefit of the facial capture and the motion capture they've done, not on just, you know, during the very brief cutscenes there are, which is a surprise in itself, but the animations, if you, you know, place it next to the, the last Metal Gear, Guns of the Patriots, it's a massive step forward, not just in terms of how it looks when you're moving, but just to play, like the transition between animation so going from a crouch to a crawl just feels so much more smooth it's much less clunky to get around the environment so it feels you know i say this in the written review it feels like in motion every bit the next gen yeah. prospect when you're actually playing it so okay so so for your 20 to 30 pounds depending on platform yeah. and or retail or digital mm -hmm. what are you you getting there's one there's a core okay, mission yeah. that unlocks other missions sure yeah so the main core mission is the ground zeroes mission um which is the the nighttime base infiltration of and Camp Omega. I should just say, actually, before we continue, I'll put a link up to this now. You you did a speed run this morning, which is also up on the site and on the YouTube, yeah. and you did the main mission in 18 minutes. Yeah, 18 minutes and 5 seconds, and that was only my third playthrough, mm. and that was... But this is, so you have to get in, you have to rescue Paz and Chico. Yeah, you rescue Chico from here, um, and then you rescue Paz from somewhere else in the base. But also, you know, doing it in 18 minutes is not indicative of the entire experience. <laughs> On my first playthrough, and let me again emphasise I'm a Metal Gear Madman who went through the last game 16 times. I think at the review event, the original review event, I finished it quicker than anyone else. I'm not trying to sound like I'm, <laughs> I'm blowing my own horn a lot, but it's a sad horn, and you know, I could have used <laughs> that horn far better in my life. Um, I don't want to know what you do with your horn. But I think the average person who's just going through this, so it'll probably take them an hour and a half to two hours. Yeah. I would, you know, certainly first time through, I would not recommend speeding through it because there's a lot of you know hidden collectibles, audio files, XOF patches, and um, there's a, there's a lot of ways of, of doing it. I mean, yeah, I've, there are, I've yeah, seen absolutely. like like bombs being used, being done stealthily, mm. smuggling mm. in in the back of trucks. So yeah, um, I mean, once you finish it once, you get like up to 23 different award rewards, which are different weapons, and because you know this is. A sandbox, you know, it's a proper open world sandbox where, also in scale, you know, it's it's much more closer to like a Stevenage than a Skyrim. It's not a <laughs> massive sprawling expanse, but for what there is, you know, it it's you know you can essentially go about it any way you deem fit. Yeah. So there are multiple entry points. There are lots of different ways to sneak to where you have to get to. So this is a far cry from the last game where it was essentially. We're coming from very, you know, quite linear, small, interconnected corridors that are all split by loading screens to one mm. big, seamless environment, which is, for this series is it's, a big it's deal. It's a huge change. I think yeah. we, yeah, maybe in the, you know, the kind of post Far Cry 3 yeah. and Batman, we may take that for granted, but, you know, in the eight years that have passed since the last game, this is a big sea change. Right? Mm. Mechanically and structurally, the biggest sea change that the series has undergone since, you know, MSX to PS1. So. Kojima does seem to be getting quite sort of obsessed with the idea of letting kind of people create their own stories and not having to sort of rein in this sort of linear stealth experience. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I, 
beyond the original Ground Zero's mission, which, as we said, could yeah. Take. So what what are the side ops then? So, the side so yeah, ops, side they're, ops. they're not like little sort of side quests within the main mission. They are separate missions. Yeah, you separate unlock missions. at the end. Your separate missions you unlock at the end. Then you basically you thought they have to go through one by one. Yeah. Depending on how good you are, they could take anywhere from ten minutes to forty minutes. They're all quite different in approach. So one is. Um, basically like an on-rails helicopter sequence where you're basically just blasting everything oh, on the really? site, which is actually really enjoyable and does show off the, the kind of revamped shooting mechanics. Uh, another one you have to like find two snipers, you have to find a sniper and a spotter and then it's up to you, you know, they constantly move around the map which is interesting so... Is that anything like the end kind of um, confrontation? Ki kind of, I mean it, it is in the sense that they constantly move around so it's hard to predict where they're going to be. How are you tracking them? You're not using a, like a mic or... Anything? Well it, it shows you their position in real time on your iDroid device right. which you might see here. Yeah. The iDroid you can bring up with a touchpad. Did you do actually, so the iDroid is a thing you have in game that manages all your, your stuff but you can mm. also access it on a, on iPad in a separate app. Um, yeah. Did you do anything with the sort of the mother base stuff or any of that? I didn't during the review no. event, but I, you know you do have to use the iDroid a lot. Yeah, I think I mentioned you, this in the speedrun video. You, know, you do have to get used to basically using every single, yeah, inter, like every single part of the Jewel Shot Four. You will use it, so it does well, it require uses like, individual dot, 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 corners of the touch. Yeah, I mean it, it's, it's ridiculous. It literally, yeah, you're right. It uses all four corners of the touchpad, um, which is you know quite disconcerting at first when your eyes that. The upper left hand section of the touchpad is the pause button, which yeah. takes a while to get used from. But um, yeah, I mean, you can see it's very thoughtfully been designed with that controller in mind. I know it's a multi format game, but the, the, the rumble, I, I think the for the DualShock 4, they actually got in like their own rumble director. Yeah. You can, you know, I must say, the rumble is exceptionally good. Um, it's just really well thought out and it really, really adds a a tactical experience. We just saw the our vehicle, I just want to quickly highlight this. Mm. The vehicles are actually quite good. Um and for a series it's never like you control vehicles before and you know we've had on rail sessions yeah, yeah. before. They actually handle surprisingly well. And they're actually again, yet again, really surprisingly they're a viable option for stealth as well. Not only like this truck you can see um you can sneak in the back of a truck which is very useful from getting from point A to B, yeah. but you know, if you don't drive like a lunatic, you can actually just drive around as well without no getting immediately spotted. So that was it. All the daytime stuff we're seeing here—that is side, the side up stuff. Yeah, and is there's it? also a PS PlayStation exclusive, which is the Deja Vu mission. Yeah. That is all based on like, PS1 textures and the original Metal Gear songs. I mean, for, for such a small game, there's a lot of kind of stuff in there with yeah. the trucks, with the, the the guns, and all the different things you can do. So yeah, it'd be I mean, interesting how that ties into Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. Yeah. Yeah. Which is apparently going to be coming out in two hundred times the size. I think two hundred times the size. Yeah, the release date at the moment is being pinned to early twenty fifteen. I'd imagine it's going to come out in like March or April mm -hmm. next year. So it's but probably a year away. Overall, uh, eight out of ten. Despite its its brevity, it's it's still got enough substance. Yeah, it's excellent. It's probably the best. It's one of the best looking things in PS4. And you know, there's about a good seven or eight hours of gameplay. So it's a good two or three evenings play. I'd definitely recommend it. Lovely. Thank you very much.